Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question and answer program with you, the radio listeners, at any point in time during this half-hour broadcast. You have the opportunity to pick up your phones and dial the number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions, and we'd love to listen to your comments as well. So we're going to deal with the subject this afternoon, are you still in the religion you were born in, and why? Are are you still in the religion you were born in? And uh, I'm going to ask the question, and why? In Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, Paul says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof, he might trust in the flesh. Paul said, I'm more. He was circumcised the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching in the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, he persecuted the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things, he says, were gained to me, he said, those I counted laws, he says, for Christ. Our subject matter is, are you still in the religion you were born in? And the question is, and why? 281-837-2222, and Brother Ozan will pick up with our studies. Brother Ozan. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Javier. God bless you, brother. Welcome, audience. God bless you for your desire to know the truth. Those that have already found salvation, God bless you for your listening and support. Now, we're going to talk about, real quick, and I'm going to let these brothers take over. Uh, concerning uh, this subject, are you still in the religion you were born in? Many of you just want to say quickly, you're like me, you left the Catholic Church, but you're like my brother who's deceased, you went to the Baptist Church. And I'd like to ask you, the number is 281-837-22. I'd like to ask you, if all the churches are the same, why did you leave the Catholic Church, and why are you in the Baptist Church? Please call 281-837-2222. Some of you have left religious beliefs such as Seventh-day Adventists, and now you may be in the Catholic Church. Why did you leave? I just want to know, why did you leave? Some of you have left from being a Muslim, and now you lay claim to saying that you're a Christian because you're in the Methodist Church. Why did you leave if all belief systems are the same? See, this is the hypocrisy. Don't be ashamed to call in. State your point. Get your scriptures together and validate. Because we know all churches are not the same. And you knew that too. The problem is you fell short of your journey. You left one false system and traded off another. I want to show you how that still can't save your soul. Look at Acts 19, verse number 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Acts 19, 1, Paul having passed to the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Disciples means learners. They are learners, but they are not learners of business and entrepreneurship, they are learners of religion. And, and it is to be commended, I commend all of you, whether you are even going to church, but just studying your Bible, I commend you and may God bless you to find the truth. It is something to be said for a person who is looking for God. The problem is, don't get weary and fall short of the goal of salvation. Because these disciples think that they've arrived. And look what he says in verse 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there have been the Holy Ghost. Now these religious learners would have had to at some point discuss deity with Paul for him to start asking questions about the Holy Spirit. One thing I want to point out to you is this about the story of Diana. I want you to understand the power of this woman God, this goddess, this diva. Look at, if you will, the book of Acts, uh, chapter number 19. Uh, this lady is no slouch. You could say it's ladies' night almost in her land because she is definitely very, very powerful. Why don't you look at Acts 19, if you will, and see why is she so powerful. Uh, men are making her great. So Acts chapter 19 and verse number 22. So he went into Macedonia, two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season, that being Paul. 
And the same time, there arose no small stir about that way, which is the Christian way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. He was, he was loaded with money. For when he called together with the workmen of this like occupation and said, Sirs, you know how that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see in here that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away, uh, he says, much people saying that there be no gods made with hands. Now he's against that belief system, Demetrius, verse 27. So that not only this our crap is in danger, how is it in danger? It's like blockbusters become dismantled because they're going to quit buying silver shrines to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana, see now watch this. Now Dem Demetrius is not just in it for the money. Demetrius <laughs> believes this. And that's why he's making the shrines and he's gaining. He's considering a blessing from the God of Diana. He says, but also that the temple of the great God of Diana should be despised. See, that's bothering his spirit. And her magnificence should be destroyed. Whom all Asia, look at the depth and the world worship. Did you see that? This lady has got it going on and people have created her image. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Notice, Diana of the Ephesians. Now watch this. Verse 29, And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, it says, uh, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples suffered him not, he says, and a certain of the chief Asia, which were his friends, chief of Asia, sent unto him, desiring that he would not adventure himself into the theater. They're telling Paul, you don't know what's going on. Don't go, don't let him go in now. Why? Because they're killing him. Some down for a crime. One thing and some another for the assembly was confused and the more part knew not whether they were come together. This is a major religion that it's Hub is Ephesus, and Asia has been influenced, and even the world. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him far. And Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, oh, this is a Jew. He's another one that is at least associated with the father of Jesus Christ, God. All one voice about the space of two hours cried, Greatest Diana of the Ephesians. How many rallies have you been to for two hours? Now, I don't even think a Trump rally, as much as it's been posted, went for two hours hollering Trump, Trump, Trump. That's two hours. Only saying, down. this is major. Verse 35. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, You men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of Ephesus is a worshiper of the great God of Thine? You hear? This is well known. This is bigger than Twilight. He says clearly, and that the image which fell down from Jupiter, so Jupiter, another god, sent down, not the planet, a god, sent down the image, just the image. See, this is a slick story. See, they're not talking about a real Diana case. They say, okay, now we're going to get y'all. This is why we believe in the shrine. He sent an image of her, not her. See, there's different, not Jesus Christ, a, a physical person with a spiritual deity problem. He sent a physical image of Diana, and it fell right there and said, this is my city. Seeing then that these things, look at how they say, cannot be spoken again. This is like the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be off. It cannot be spoken again. It's too much influence. You ought to be quiet and do nothing rational. For you have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of your church, they haven't stole the shrines, neither yet blaspheme of your God. They're not blasphemers. He said they're not blasphemers. They're speaking that there is no Diana. And his point is, man, everybody knows Diana fell out of Jupiter's hands to heal her image. People know that. He can't dispute that. Why? For if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him, have a matter against any man, the law is open. And there are deputies, lest them and plead one 
another. See, argue with each other over that. But if you inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. There being no cause whereby we may give an account of this conquest. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Why is that so important to read? Now we're going to go to Acts 19. These men are from the city of Diana. Mm -hmm. And her influence has engulfed Diana to where everybody knows the story. So these men would have come from an influence from Diana to heal John's baptism. Now watch this. Acts 19.3. What is the reply? Have you, have you received the Holy Ghost you believe? He said to them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said, No. We don't even understand what you're talking about, Holy Ghost. They said unto John's baptism. I want to take one minute and show you the power of John's baptism. Let's go quickly to Mark chapter 1. You know how many gospel preachers and many of them that lock the doors in the church of Christ don't know that John's baptism removes sin. You know they'll say something like, yeah, those sins are removed by Christ. Your baptism, the sins are removed by Christ. Do you think when you go in the water in the church of Christ that the water really removes your sins? Your sins are removed by the baptism based on what Jesus did on the cross. You didn't know that? Moses, yeah, blood of bulls and goats can't remove sin. But if you obey to bring the blood of bulls and goats, your sins were placed on Christ. Just like if you listen to John and got baptized, your sins were placed on Christ based on your faith. You get baptized today, your sins are placed on Christ. You preachers didn't know that. No wonder y'all locked the door. But you know what? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Y'all that went to these schools like Southwestern and uh, Pepperdine and Oklahoma City, look here. You need to go tell them, give you a refund. Brother, you got ripped off. You didn't even know the basics of religion. Listen, uh, Mark chapter 1 and verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance. Why? For the remission of sin. That's the same thing we do. The same thing. For the remission of sin. That's what our baptism does. And that went out unto him all the land of Judea. I know I shook so much. Some of you shook up right now. You didn't even know that. That's a sin. I don't know what you've been listening to in church. And they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing that sin. Now you want to tell us don't go to church and you didn't even know that was in the Bible. Now listen, when he asked them in Acts 19, they're supposed to know. We did receive the Holy Spirit. How? Well, we confessed our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, as the only Son of God. We wanted to change. We had heard the gospel preached, and we believed it. And then we were baptized, and in baptism, our sins are washed away, not by the water, but by the Spirit of our God. And then he fills us with his Spirit. And then he adds to the church. Why can I find that? Hold your hand right there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. See, now this is not jumping like one guy falsely accused Brother Fred when I tried to help one day. Or oh, you're jumping now and hung up on us. We have to pray that that poor soul has repented and come back to understanding. 1 Corinthians 12 13. For by one spirit, the Bible says, heal a little down there. That's not jumping. That's what the Lord told us to go. Heal a little down there. But by one spirit, are we all baptized in one body? Is that even true? Is, that, is this just a book of lies? Should we burn and go have some croutons and sit out and relax? He says, baptizing the one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit does. Now let's go back again here to Acts 19, and we'll be done, and the brothers can take over. He says here, John's baptism, that's what they got. So what do they think? We've left the influence of Diana, the image and all the shrines. We left the hub city, the central capital, where her statue fell out from Jupiter, from heaven where Jupiter is, and gave us her image. And then we heard John talk about Jesus coming, and we got baptized, and now our sins are removed. So they believe. Unfortunately, it happens after Pentecost. And now they, not being with the 120, have to get baptized just like they did the people who had received this type of baptism in the book of Acts chapter 2. So what does Paul say? The same word. Verse 4, Acts 19, 4. Then said Paul, John, verily are truly baptized of baptism and repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, which should come after, that is, on Christ Jesus. Why didn't they say, so we got to get baptized again? 
Our sins are already removed, Paul. You questioning John? Even Jesus said was his baptism of man or was it of God? So you questioning John? The problem is if you got baptized by John and you waited to hear Christ, then you were supposed to be with the 120. Since you're not with that group, you got your message expired and now you must be baptized again. And what they say, well, look, Paul, you can't judge our religion. You can't rob us of our belief. Look here, we're waiting on Jesus. You're waiting on Jesus. We've been baptized. You've been baptized. Our sins removed. Your sins removed. We just need to love each other. You go one way like the man did, and I'm going to go the other way. Like Jesus said, leave him alone. He can hardly say anything against us. Why don't they not say that? Because Paul is saying, you don't have the right baptism, and you don't either. If you left the Catholic Church and you ain't got baptized in some free will church, some new light church, you still don't have the Holy Spirit. Your baptism is not even a Bible. You don't have You went to the Baptist church. They readily tell you baptism is saved. They're telling you up front this is not going to save you, knowingly discrediting the very action of baptism, what it's supposed to do, letting you know they're not saved. Verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What does it mean to be placed in the name of the Lord Jesus? To get his character and his authority. Look up the word name. Character and authority. You don't have his authority, friend. You can't save a soul and you can't walk up to the judgment seat of Christ and withstand the scrutiny that the Lord will x-ray you with. And we want you to have that. You cannot have his character. You will not be put together in all the different aspects of Christianity. You will be blamed. You will not die blameless. You will fall. And I want to tell you, you have to repent and repent now. I know it's hard to find a church of Christ with the doors open. That's okay. You should have went before then, but now that you know, it's time to find. You can look on the YouTube site where we're at. We'll tell you where our congregation is, where Henry's is, and we'll show you a host of others with a simple phone call. We will show you. But if you don't get baptized, you'll be just like these people. If they would have gotten baptized, you will die lost, friend. And we want you. Why don't you want Jesus to save you? Is it because you can't stop being a homosexual? You can with Christ. Is it because you can't stop sleeping with your boyfriend? You fight and he just, oh, you know it, you're in bed, y'all naked and sleeping. You can with Christ. You can't put the crack pipe down. I know you can't. None of us can. But you can with Christ. Yeah. You can't stop stealing money on the internet. You can if you get baptized into Christ. The system you're in now can't help you. The number to call is 281-837-2222. I want to thank Brother Ozan for a wonderful, wonderful explanation of the scriptures. And uh, again, the number is 281-837-2222. Are you still in the religion you're born in? And the question is why? You know, I started off reading from the Apostle Paul and his credentials from Philippians chapter 3. And, you know, God, and we know this, know exactly what he was doing when he chose the man Paul. Paul was an educated man. He was not a fool. Uh, he studied on the on the Gamaliel. The Bible tells us in Acts 5, 34, and he even mentions it when he gives his own conversion in Acts 22 and verse number 3. He also knew... Uh, secular history. Uh, when he talked to the uh, Athenians in Acts chapter 17 and 28, he even knew what some of their poets taught. He even knew the, the Cretans doctrine. And so he was very well studied in verse. And Paul mentions that before he became a Christian, what he did, he was doing it with a pure conscience. He thought that his religion that he was in was the right religion to be in until he met Christ. Now you have to ask yourself, what would make a man with so much clout in the world uh, as he mentioned, a Pharisee, a Pharisee, he was a Israelite, he was a Hebrew, a Hebrew, he was from the tribe of Benjamin, he was excelling uh, in the religion of the Pharisees in his day and age. Why in the world would a man so educated, uh, so well-versed, so well-known, so much so that Ananias heard about him, was afraid to go to him to teach him the gospel? Why would Paul now convert to the very religion of people that he was persecuting. You know why? Because he knew that the religion he was in was wrong. Amen. The religion he was born in was wrong. And when he came in contact with Christ, heard the gospel through Ananias, and I'm going to toss it to Brother Javier, I want you to listen to his account. Paul is not preaching in Acts 19, as Brother Ozan read, something he didn't practice himself. He had to get baptized himself. He knows what it takes to be saved. He was not saved on the road to Damascus. Real quickly, 
men and brethren, this is Paul, Acts 22, giving his own account of his conversion. Men and brethren and fathers, hear you my defense, which I make now unto you. When they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, again, notice what he's doing. He's speaking in Hebrew. They kept them more silent and said, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the perfect man of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God as you all are this day. I persecuted this way unto death, binding, delivering to prison both men and women. And also the high priest doth bear me witness and all the estate of the elders. For whom also I received letters of the brethren. I went to the master to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh to the master about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. I fell to the ground, heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you're persecuting. They that were with me, they saw indeed the light, were afraid. They heard not the voice of him that spake to me. I said, What shall I do, Lord? He said unto me, Arise, get this, and go into the mask, and there it shall be told you of what things you are appointed to do. Now notice, he's not saved. He's got to be told something. And when I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus, and one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, he came unto me, and he stood, and he said unto me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. The same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers have chosen you that you should know his will, see the just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For you shall be his witness unto all men of what you have seen and heard. Now notice what Ananias says to him. And now why tearest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's the plan of salvation, my friend. This is how one calls on the name of the Lord. When you hear the gospel, believe you repent, confess that he's Lord, and you get baptized in the water of grave of baptism. When you come in contact with Jesus, just like Brother Ozan explained, just like John's disciples did in Acts 19 in Ephesus, coming out of false doctrine, they had to be baptized into Christ, where in the water they received the Spirit of Christ. Paul told them in Acts 19 to do exactly what he had to do here in Acts 22 and 16. The question on the floor is, are you still in the religion you were in, that you were born in? Why, saints? Why, radio listeners? Come from among the foolishness and receive the Spirit of God so that your soul can be saved on that great and glorious day of the return of Jesus Christ. 281-837-2222. Brother Javier Frias. Amen. Bless you, Brother Henry. Very important subject. Very important subject. Uh, many were born in different faiths. I know I was born a, a Catholic, and I left the Catholic faith once I found that the Church of Christ, the doctrine matches the Church and the Bible, the way of worship, uh, the way of teaching, the order, the structure, and the foundation of the government, and how the elders and de deacons and teachers and ministers are supposed to be set up, what's supposed to be taught, and what's not supposed to be taught. I've seen the Bible, and I've seen the apostles, how they ordered, uh, and how it was done, and I've seen a match today on this side of the cross. And so in Philippians chapter 3, uh, the Bible says in verse 8, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. So Paul was a Pharisee. That was the religion that he was in before he became a Christian. He says he counts it but dung. Why does he count it but dung? Because the Pharisee versus the Christian religion that he uh, was uh, baptized into is now... Uh, what he is in now is the truth versus what he was in was a lie. And that's Amen. what we want you guys to see, audience, is the truth of the gospel. So you guys can be saved as well. Uh, so in the scriptures talk about, in the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 18, it says, Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some he seemed to be a setter forth of some strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Brother Ozan just mentioned 1 Corinthians 12 about one body, uh, baptized into one body. The resurrection. We teach the resurrection. Resurrect from where? From paradise. Amen. When Christ returns. Christ resurrected the third day. Where was he for three days? He was in paradise. So what will we do if we die before Christ comes? We will go to paradise and then resurrect when he comes and understand the scriptures talk about in the Old Testament with uh, Joshua chapter 24 where the scripture says in verse 15 
And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Bible says, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. So when it comes to what the children of Israel were worshiping, a lot of them were worshiping other gods in the land of Egypt for 430 years. Today, you have a watered down, disfigured uh, version of Christ, disfigured uh, version of Christianity that does not match the scriptures. And what we want to bring to your attention is the truth and the church that Jesus purchased and died for so you can discern and ask the question because just because your family were raised or you were raised in a religion, ask the question, is that the one that Jesus made? Is that the one that God instituted before the foundation of the world? Remember, you have to hit the nail on the head because the church that's in the Bible, God and Christ planned it before the world began. So to just choose any random one and just say it's the same, you really are gambling, and we're telling you you're gambling, Amen. and you're not going to hit the right dice numbers <laughs> by not proving, because you have to, this isn't a gamble, you have to be accurate and prove all things to hold fast that which is good. That's what Ephesians 4 talks about. Amen. Deceitful, cunning works is like gambling. It's like throwing dice. And you're throwing dice, not for your life. Yes, for your life, forgive me. So we want to look at a few more details before we close uh, concerning Acts uh, 17. So they were accusing Paul of setting forth strange gods because he brought up the resurrection in Christ. But in fact, they were the ones that had a multitude of false gods. And we ask that you take heed because there are multiple versions of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're open for calls. If not now, then we have our numbers set on our channel. The number calls 2817-2222. At this time, we'll be closing. Romans 16, 16. The Churches of Christ salute you. That's a good foundation, brother. Because that Acts 19 deals with, you know, people leaving from a very powerful worship to John, which is the front row of to Jesus. That's right. I mean, it'd be easy to say, man, it's too much. Man, we already left the image thing. Now we got to do this. And that's why people get caught when they leave Catholicism or some other religion and go to the Baptist, Methodist, Seventh-day Adventist, and then they hear the gospel. Then they got to get baptized again. And they're like, I've already been baptized, you know. And some of them will leave Seventh-day Adventist to the Baptist and then say, well, I've been baptized twice. You know, and yeah, uh, one guy told me I've been baptized more than Paul. You know, and uh, he told me, so I said, but you're still not saved because none of them have been administered by a member of our church. Remember what Daniel said. It, the kingdom will not be left to other people. It Amen. will not. And people have got to accept that, brother. It's not going to be left for other people to come in. And say, All kingdoms are left to other people. When you die, sometimes someone overtakes your children, and they take the kingdom over, you know, and it is there. It will not be left on people. The, the law will not allow uh, a denominational group to take over his church and then begin to work. He will not allow it. He never allowed anyone to take over Israel and then allow them to be priests instead of Aaron's son. So it's not going to happen. So Amen. God bless you, brother. I pray that people change, man. Good job, brother. You God too, brother. You, you know, there's a frustration with people who uh, go from one... Uh, false religion to another false religion yes. and then from that false religion to another one because they don't see something right, right. Uh, just understand that in the scriptures uh, there's Bible says that there's one body mm -hmm. one Lord one faith one baptism Ephesians 4 4 in 1st Corinthians 12 it says you're baptized into one body yes. so in the scriptures there shows that there was one type of church yes. that the apostles went to that the Christians went to now that church is still here today and so they are some of them confused or some of them lost uh, concerning Christ. So they turn to sin. They turn to uh, just wandering around yeah. because they haven't found it. And we just ask that those listening that they call the numbers that we have on the channel in order to have a Bible study Amen. to answer all those questions. Yeah. Uh, so you guys can get uh, a definite detail of 
the church that Jesus built. Uh, because you have to look at the time it was made, matches the scriptures, the doctrine, way of worship, who made it, man of God. And you have to like location. What place did it start with? Right. If it didn't start in Jerusalem, then it's not of God. It's not of God. And there's many that will start in Jerusalem, whether Pharisee, Sadducee. Mm -hmm. But by their doctrine, Matthew 22 and 23, those two chapters show that the Pharisee, Sadducees, were also started by men. Yes, by men. Yeah. Amen. Well said, bro. That's a good point. Yeah.